Texas Hamptons is Marcelin and Alex. And today we're here with Tom Dolby, who's an American filmmaker, producer, and novelist. He is the director and co-writer of The Artist's Wife, which premiered at the Hamptons International Film Festival in 2019 and was released in September on Amazon Prime and other streaming services. Tom, it's so nice to see you again, and I wanted to thank you so much for agreeing to meet with us on Zoom. We are in New York and you are in LA. Last year, I had the privilege and the pleasure to interview you at the Maidstone Inn where we were able to meet in the casual setting and had a wonderful talk. And this year navigating through this pandemic, uh, you know, we are meeting on Zoom and I'm, we are so excited to talk to you today. Thank you for having me. Yes, it's, it's a pleasure. And um, so the movie, The Artist's Wife, uh, Tom, is about lives, commitments, dreams, mm -hmm. and also living in the second and third act, right? But it's also really dealing and managing the unexpected. The unexpected in life that we come across unexpectedly, which is mm -hmm. throws us through a loop and this is kind of what we're experiencing and going through now in this pandemic. Um, what comes to mind thinking about that? The film has some interesting parallels to what is going on right now. I think of our main character, Claire, who's sort of stuck in this beautiful white box of a house in East Hampton. And she's going through this personal tragedy, um, but she's also realizing that she's going through a transformation it's the best sort of thing I think that can come out of, of a tragic situation is if you find some new growth and some new life as you take on new challenges, but uh, boy, it's, it's, hard to, it's hard to achieve that. Yes, absolutely. And you know, I think there, as you said, there are so many parallels, right? And what I also think of Tom is like, you know, connecting and reconnecting with family, going the extra mile, you know, going out of your comfort zone to connect with people and family and trying to maybe mend relationships that were broken and so forth. And the quintessential message that um, I got from your movie, The Artist's Wife, was to me uh, forgiveness. And I felt like that message of forgiveness and that life really doesn't go on without, you can't move on in life without forgiveness. Yeah, absolutely. Forgiveness is a huge theme of the movie. Um, forgiveness, reconciliation, and sort of this idea of going back to one's past, whether it, it's with Claire and her painting or for, for Richard and his daughter and, and reconciling with her. And, um, you know, it's not, it's not a pleasant thing to do. We don't want to do it, but it's, you know, as we see in the film, it has it has unexpected and amazing results. I really identified with the main character because sometimes I, I feel like we get caught up in perhaps in relationships, in marriages, in love, and we put ourselves kind of second, or we forget about kind of who we are. At the end, she kind of found her self again. I don't want to give the ending away because it is very, very powerful. Tell us more about the casting. How did Bruce Dern come about? We started with uh, with Lena Olin, who's the main character playing Claire. And I was very excited. This this was a difficult topic to take on. It's topics of, of third acts, of aging, of living with a spouse who has dementia coming on. And these are, these are challenging topics to take on. And I knew that Lena's European background and her classical theater training in particular, um, training with directors like Bergman, um, would, would really set her up beautifully to, to take on some of these, these topics that are difficult. And then when we went to Bruce, I, I also knew that Bruce has been so fearless in his work. He's so, he's so courageous and he doesn't, he, it's like, it's like he, do, he doesn't even feel, he doesn't even feel the fear. He just dives in and does it. and. And I knew that they would would create this incredibly dynamic pair. And you feel they had they have such sparks flying between them. They do have such chemistry, and it was such a, a beautiful thing that first day on set. And 
both of them said independently to me, like, ooh, I'm just, I'm feeling something. It's like the camera, when, when the camera's on, you just, you feel it. And it's very hard to portray a married couple, believably, on screen. And, you know, you have two people who have never met each other. Um, but when you're working with, with uh, actors like this who are real pros, it's, uh, sometimes you get lucky and we got, we got really lucky. The date is set. It's been written about. I'll be ready, honey. I always pull it together. You know that. I got some sketches here and I can't find them. They're in a little notebook. What kind of notebook? A notebook with all my personal things in them. And how can I trust you with all of my personal things if you lose them? What are you talking about? It's my very important things, okay? Why am I explaining to you? I was talking about the show, Richard. I've had it with the show. Don't mention it anymore. It's not your job. My job? My job? Shit. <clears throat> I don't know what happens. Everything starts going away. It disappears. People disappear. Are you drunk? It all gets lost. You chose the Hamptons as a location. What was it like for you to shoot there? And why was that your choice? I had actually lived out in the Hamptons uh, for many years or had a house out there for many years and had been out there full time for about two years. Uh, and this was about 10 years ago. Uh, and I had experienced one of those famous winters and how sort of bleak and cold and dark it was. And yet there was such creativity that I felt personally like springing up, you know, and, and I loved the metaphor of it being winter and then spring is coming and there's certain, you know, rebirth and, and all the things, reconciliation and forgiveness. Um, so, I, and I love the Hamptons at, in terms of the artistic community out, out there. Um, there's such a rich uh, tradition and history of, of artists and, and their wives. Um, in, and so that was, that was also inspirational uh, in terms of the story. Um, shooting in the in the Hamptons was incredible. I mean, it's it's so beautiful. I mean, particularly in the winter when we had we felt like we had most of the towns, you know, sort of to ourselves, so to speak. But it was it was exciting, and and to be in such a beautiful location was such a privilege. The Hamptons get pretty cold, and the snowstorms get yes, get insane. How did you handle that? We had, we did have a few days of rain. We actually had, I think in one of our driving, one of the, day, the days, it was one of our last days we were shooting, we were doing a number of driving sequences and it was raining and we were, everybody was kind of hysterical, like, oh my God, it's not supposed to be raining because when she pulls into her driveway in the beginning of the movie, you see that the sun is out. And my producer had really good advice. He said, let's just shoot and see what happens. And it came back and, and, and the footage was, was beautiful. And, and we talked to a visual effects house and we said, can you remove some of the rain on the window or all of the rain on the window? And they said, absolutely. And that's, they specialize in that. So we really got lucky. And I love that when she's driving, you can literally see behind her the exact landmarks that she is, that you then see her point of view, you know, out the window. So, um, so that was really important to me to, to, be, to be authentic. Um, but yeah, we had a few, we had a few days of rain and then sometimes we had a beautiful snowstorm, uh, on one day we were shooting in the, in the big house, Claire and Richard's house, which is in East Hamptons, big, big black, uh, modern house. Gorgeous. And, um, the snow was just coming down and, and nobody knew what to do. And I said, just have, have Lena come over and, you know, they said, what, what should she wear? What scene is this for? And I said, I don't know. Just put her in a sweater because we have a lot of sweaters and um we shot just these little vignettes that ended up uh working and functioning as as a, a real important turning point a really important turning point at the end of the movie so again sometimes you just you get lucky and you know you get um you know sometimes weather works with you and sometimes it works against you but you either way you, you figure out a way to make it work if you were thinking of the movie and what we're going through right now if there was a silver lining for you, what would it be? I think with the pandemic, we have we have all been forced to examine or re-examine our choices in life. And, and certainly for, I mean, really for anybody, but I think especially for those of us who are 
who are creative and who start who turn inward for for inspiration. Um, you know, it's a, it is a challenge, but I think that you know beautiful things can come out. And I I have friends who are writers and musicians who are who are discovering new things. It's taken a while though, and I think it's been really hard for people. What was one of your most memorable scenes to shoot, or the toughest scene to shoot? One scene that was extremely emotional was the scene where they have the big fight in the studio, and we were running up against our 12-hour deadline at that point, and at, after 12 hours in film, you go into overtime, and so I was very aware of that. And, you know, having these two incredible actors really just giving it giving it their all in terms of this real fight in not a physical fight but in really an emotional and you know an emotional fight and it was just knowing knowing what my actors were going through and knowing that they were sticking sticking through it to the end was just so inspiring and it's an it's an incredible scene i'm really i'm really proud of it yeah another scene that um uh, i was really uh taken by was when uh, the daughter and, and grandson come to visit uh, mm -hmm. the house in East Hampton and Claire had invited them to come and I don't even think she told Richard about it, but um, <laughs> it was really something that was really showing all the conflict, the inner conflict from the past and the being in the in this present moment, like being all together in this one room, and you know, nobody really wanted to be there, but it was yet the right time to come together. And it was just such an interesting uh, juxtaposition. And, and then how, you know, later on, I don't want to give it away, obviously, but it the the scene in the end ends. Mm -hmm. on a beautiful note and it was very, something that I could so relate to from my own life. Yes, I think I think we've all experienced this with with family members, particularly older family members and you know sort of generationally they have different, you know, they don't know what the appropriate questions to ask and so it's very easy it's very easy to offend um he uh Richard asks his his daughter um is uh, about about his grandson, is he yours biologically? Which is not a question that you ask, but he's, you know, he's trying desperately to connect, you know, and, and yet I think he also knows he's being a little inappropriate. So we were playing with that, um, sort of that fine line there with his character. I love that um, the daughter is uh, gay and portrayed in a light that's not so stereotypical, stereotypical. Mm -hmm that would be in other films. Uh, two thumbs for that for me. That's, that's inspiring itself, showing a positive, um, real, like honest uh, woman that's LGBTQ. That was, uh, that was a big thing for me. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, that was really important to us. And it really, it was just, it just came out of the script naturally. Um, but I love, yeah, I love that character. It's, uh, you know, I think we're in it. We're in a new era of um, for gay characters in film, where it's, you know, they they can sort of just blend in and not, you know, be be part of the whole scenario. This is nice. Did he go back to sleep? Yeah, he said he wanted his magic spray, and, and then he comes right up. Hi, hello, I'm Claire. Hey, hey, right. So nice to meet you. And I'm sure you've heard terrible things about me, Richard. Yeah. And some of them are true. Claire. But I hope you can forgive us, because we're family. Danny's the babysitter. Oh. Yeah, I'm the, oh just the babysitter. <laughs> oh. I'm gay, Claire. I had a child with my partner. Right, right. I'd love to meet her. Well, you can't, because she left me. She's living in Hell's Kitchen with a spin teacher she met eight days after we separated. Oh, I'm, just, I'm sorry. There's so much he doesn't know about you. Um, so if you don't need me, I'm gonna head. Yeah, sure. Oh, 
Oh, it was nice. <laughs> it was nice to meet you. Yeah, no, I'm no. so sorry. I assumed you were heterosexual. Uh, no, I, I am. I am heterosexual. Angela isn't, though. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> see you tomorrow. Great. See you tomorrow. Nice meeting you. How did you yourself prepare for the artist's life? Very good question. Um, you know, visuals were a big part of it. I was I was looking at a lot of artists. I was looking at a lot of um, actually like old fashioned magazines in terms of like like inspiration for the looks of the different characters. Um, watching old movies, watching watching some of Lena's older movies, watching some of Bruce's older movies. Um, they were really incredible, really inspiring. Um, and I was very inspired by, by dramas from the 1970s and the early 1980s. You know, we don't see so many of those dramas anymore. They, they do, they fall more in the indie category today, but they used to be studio films, um, you know, Kramer versus Kramer, Ordinary People, films like that. I was very inspired by those. And I believe you took an acting class. <laughs> I did, gosh, how did you know that? <laughs> that was a few years ago, but uh, no, actually, no, I did another one. I did, yeah, so I did take an acting class, um, which I got, I got some great advice from a, from a producer a while back. He said, if you want to prepare to direct, take an acting class. You know, I know you probably have before, and I had, you know, when I was younger. And it's such, it was so great to see the vulnerability that my own actors had to, had to commit themselves to. And it really, it really gave me a, a greater sense of, of empathy and, and compassion for what they were going through. Ma'am, you have to pay for that. I am paying for it. Before you eat it. What do you want me to do now? I'm paying for this. I'm thinking of these, I'm thinking of these, I'm thinking of these. Are you happy now? Tom, obviously, we, we know, you know, you have, you grew up in the movie industry, you grew up in the film industry, and it's in your blood. Mm -hmm. And um, your industry has been challenged, like so many, unfortunately. Uh, where do you see yourself going? Has it challenged your creativity in a certain way? It, it really has. I mean, we're, we're, as a company, we're doing a lot of development of material now. Um, you know, we're not, we're not shooting anything. I know that uh, bigger productions are going now, but it is, it's challenging when you shoot, when you shoot small movies, it is cha really challenging in an environment like this, but it does, it does um, allow you to dig deep and, and look at new material that, uh, that you want to develop. Absolutely. Fabulous. We are excited and we, we can't wait to see uh, what's next. Do you feel Thank there's you. going to be possibly the artist's life part two? What happens after? I think it's, I think it's a pretty complete journey, but it's certainly a, a set of themes that I'm very interested in exploring. And I, I have a feeling those themes will come back in the future. We can all relate uh, to this movie on different levels. We're not only talking about patients, but also caregivers in this mm -hmm. connection. So um, it is, it, it's a very important message. It's, a, it's very important that we raise this awareness, that we have this awareness of what's going on, and that we are also, that we can open ourselves up to reach out and, and help out. Mm -hmm. The artist's life is definitely a deep film that's thought-provoking. It's very emotional. The acting is superb. The writing and directing is absolutely magnificent. The location is beyond fabulous. And the most important thing, it is very educational. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much. You are about to open the Dolby Terrace. The Academy Museum, um, is opening in April, which is very exciting. And there is the Dolby Family Terrace on the roof, which my mother and my brother and I are, are really honored to uh, to be part of. And it's a, a tribute to, to my father. And I, the, the museum is really gonna be an incredible place. But, um, you know, we are, we are just, a, we're a small part of the whole, the whole thing. Um, the, the 
I have to say, after the pandemic, please come to LA and visit the museum. You are a very important part of the whole thing and obviously <laughs> continuing your legacy. So congratulations on that. And that has to be very exciting. And we can't wait to hear more about it and hopefully uh, come visit very soon. <laughs>